Hola, buenos días, es Nico. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was trying to be a little sexy just because of the topic. So today we're going to be breaking down Loadgate. Um, we're going to be talking about sex positivity and we're going to be talking about the serious fact that sex addiction runs rampantly within our community. So, before we get this started, if you like this kind of content, make sure to follow me on Patreon at patreon.com slash nicosetics to help me keep my lights on and continue to make content that you enjoy daily. Well, weekly. Three videos a week if you're on Patreon, two videos a week if you're just on YouTube. I mean, it's win-win scenario for both of us. <laughs> okay, I'm done plugging. But also, um, essentially, today we're going to be talking about what happened on Twitter. Nico, what happened? Essentially, somebody posted that they were a successful dump. What is that? Well, essentially, they posted a video of them saying that they took 75 ejaculations, <laughs> 75 loads, and that it was from a 75 anonymous partners. They said that one of the people provided them with six of the 75, so it's not 75 individual anonymous people, but it's within the 50s individual anonymous people and higher. So they did all of this, not in a week, not in a month, but within 20 hours. And people were rightfully saying that that was done in excess. And before we start this dialogue, I wanted to say that in my follow-up tweets, because in the main tweets, I did not say this, but in my follow-up tweets, I did diagnose them with sex addiction, which I am not qualified to do. So that is the only point prior to this dialogue that I want to say that I was wrong. I am not a therapist, and even if they do go by the textbook definition of what sex addiction is described as, a life-consuming, you know, addiction to the rush of sex, I am not qualified to diagnose them. So that's where I did overstep, and I apologize for that. <laughs> no one was going to talk to me about it on this video, but I'm just going to come forth and say that. But I still stand by everything else I said. Other than the actual diagnosing them, I still agree with everything that I said. So essentially, people were saying, if you call it excessive, if you say that it is borderline sex addiction, that you are not sex positive. And the sex positivity movement is about sexual knowledge, sexual freedom, and sexual health. And I feel like that is the part where we're not actually talking. Like, whenever you talk about this to people, they want to use sex positivity in a way that says that you just have to be okay with whatever sexual activities that happen. And like I said, we cannot judge him for taking 75 anon loads just because he's a grown man and he can do what he wants with his body. But we can acknowledge that it is excessive to an addiction standpoint and that it is dangerous. Nigo, what do you mean? Having a 75 man powwow, super happy adult fun time to the point that it looks like you have cold grits coming out of your booty hole, that is not healthy in a global panorama. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm trying to say, YouTube since it's that. It is not healthy in a global panorama. Not to mention, it is not healthy in a sexual health way. Because he's very open about his HIV status and that he's on HIV medication and has been for multiple years. And that involves him getting tested regularly. <laughs> so people are like, so you can't say that it is unsafe, whatever that is. But when you look through his comments, he consistently talks about catching STDs and or STIs every time this happens, and that he uses the antibiotic period as a resting zen point for his body so that he can just get back up and go again. And that's where it's not safe. <laughs> I mean, global panorama aside, you know, global pangea, it's the fact that you're willingly 
and openly admitting that you catch STDs and or STIs from every time you become a quote unquote dump site. And you're possibly exposing all 70 plus people that were inside of your powwow to these sexual infections and or diseases that they've been spread in their own personal lives. <laughs> so nothing about the scenario is safe if we're looking from global Pangea and or sexually transmitted infections wise. So when we're having this discussion about it not being safe, there is no way you could possibly counteract that. And I had people in the comments trying to say, well, you don't understand. It's just as unsafe at one partner. And you know what? The logical, you know, big brain bitch that I am, I'm sitting here going, the fuck are you talking about? Because they're sitting here saying, well, you could catch something from one anonymous partner, so it's just as dangerous. And then somebody had to break it down to them, yeah. Now imagine that times 75 because you're being stupid. Like, I <laughs> unprotected sex in general is unsafe. If we can acknowledge that one partner can give you any kind of infection and or disease, multiply it by 75 and you realize that's a lot more unsafe. Like that's that's what I'm, you know what? That's, that's just common sense, that's logical. But you know what? A lot of bitches don't have common sense. You know, I'm one of the few bitches that runs with common sense as my guiding force. But you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, the lack of critical thinking around sexual health and sex positivity truly irks me because I'm truly sex positive. And I made it a point to say that I cannot shame this person because he is a grown adult and he's doing what he wants with his body. And the people that he's pops possibly infecting with the other STIs that he's catching are also grown adults. So they know that if I'm going to a 75 man powwow and plunging some grit filled booty hole, you might catch something. That's just, that's logical. You know, a logical bitch would think I'm probably going to catch something. So at that point, yes, they're choosing to take it upon themselves to do what they want, but it is still a sexual health risk. It is still a general health risk because of the global Pangea. So moving on to that, people try to make it a bottom situation. And that's the thing. Whenever sexual dialogue comes around, they're like, well, if it was a top plunging himself into 75 different booty holes, y'all wouldn't care. And yes, we would. Like, that's the thing. Stop trying to derail the conversation into micro conversations that have nothing to do with this actual dialogue about sexual and overall physical health into a, this is a bottom issue. This is not a bottom issue. It, it really is not. If a top came out and said, I topped 75 people in 20 hours, then I would also look at them funny because we also need to realize the, the coochie, <laughs> the boochie, let's say that. The boochie hole was not meant for sex. If we're being honest, the boochie hole was meant to expunge fecal matter, not take ping pong ding dong. That's not, that's not its original purpose. So taking one pain usually has me in pain for like a week or two. Imagine 75 in 20 hours with no rest. The anal fissures and tearing alone could cause infection, but then you're mixing all of these bodily fluids with and who, I mean, he's also come out and said that he catches STDs and STIs every time he does this. That's doing extreme harm to the body. So that is no longer about, that's no longer coming into sexual safety, sexual health. It only falls under consensual sex. So that is not sex positivity. Like that's what people don't understand. People think that you have to just be down for whatever or else you're a prude or you're not sex positive. You can be sex positive and still want to practice sexual health, being protective of your body because you only get one body so this entire dialogue just kept wrapping around in circles because you know like i said within the lgbt community we are hypersexual we are sex focused because we're quote unquote all men but we don't acknowledge that a lot of the people within our community have sex addiction just because i remember somebody said well the reasons why they could be doing it for is for emotional gratification, to seem wanted, to fix their own internal insecurities by being pursued sexually. And that's what falls under sex addiction. And I feel like that's what a lot of people go for. You know, people, obviously, like I said, I'm not a therapist, so I cannot diagnose anybody. But the large amounts of excessive unprotected sex that happens within our community should be a little concerning. I mean, you know, everybody hunches. So I'm not gonna say it's just like an LGBT thing. But when I look at like our counterparts, and you know, I usually don't compare us to like heterosexual people. But when I look at our counterparts, they said that most heterosexual people in a lifetime will have about five to six sexual partners. 
while most LGBT people are within like double to triple digits. So it's just, it's an interesting dialogue that we should have because sex positivity is important. You know, especially on Patreon, I'm very open about what I've done in my past, what I like to watch and do. So it's not like I'm approved because bitch, if you're on Patreon, y'all know I get deep down and dirty, but it's more so you still have to practice sexual health. You still should be able to move around your day-to-day -day life without sex being the only thing on your mind. And somebody said sex addiction is an all-consuming thing. So you shouldn't associate it with this dialogue. And I had to tell them, having 75 Anon partners in a 20 hour long sexual binge is an all consuming activity. That's why I personally said it aligns with sexual addiction. Uh, like I said, I cannot diagnose him, but textbook definitions it aligns, especially because this isn't a one-time thing. I had to explain in my reasoning that if this was just a one-time bucket list, everybody has a hit list, you know? The thing is, this is a regular thing for him. Like his entire Twitter page is about finding funding to buy hotel rooms and his next event goal is an 80 plus dump. So it's like the sexual health, the sexual safety, the overall health safety, like, cause it's a health risk is not there. It's, it's it's just extremely dangerous and this is a frequent pattern for him. That's why I said it aligned with sex addiction. So once again, I apologize for diagnosing him personally, even if it is the textbook definition, because I am not a therapist, but we also have to sit back and think about how hypersexualized our community is. And that if you say this is dangerous or this is excessive, you are viewed as anti-sex positivity because that's the tweet that really got me where it was saying, well, if you're not, it's, it, it People always say sexual addiction when it's more than you would do. And I'm like, more than I would do is like maybe four people a day. I've never done that. Even in my heyday, I think the most I've done is like top two people in a day. 75 nonstop partners in 20 hours. Even if it was like one person giving multiple rounds, that's 75 peens in 20 hours with nonstop, no breaks. That is damaging your body. <laughs> like the, the excess, it, it's excessive. That's why we say excessive and that's why we say it aligns with sexual addiction. But definitely drop your opinions down below. Do you think load gate is overblown? Do you think that 75 sexual partners in 20 hours is perfectly reasonable? And if you disagree with that, do you believe that it's anti-sex positivity? Do you believe that he is being sexually safe? Seeing as how sexual positivity also encompasses sexual knowledge and sexual health, Seeing as how he openly admits to catching multiple STDs and or STIs per session and just uses the antibiotic period to give his body time to rest before the next round. Definitely drop your opinions down below because this set the timeline on fire because it's so polarizing for people. It's either you're for 75 people in 20 hours or you're anti-sex positivity and approved. But definitely drop your opinions down below because this was wild. And the video, the video itself wasn't even that bad. It just looked like cold grits was spilling out of him. And it was just, that's that's the image that is sitting in my mind. But yeah, definitely drop your biggest down below. <laughs> and once again, a quick thank you to all my patrons on Patreon and a quick shout out to my third eye tier patrons. Your support means everything to me and helps me do this a lot more smoothly. I will also be listing this week's live stream topic in case anybody wants to join in on the fun. I'll see you guys there.